Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. Today we're in Grand Pound in search of a golden hiding place. Paradise Private Beach. <laughs> in our video today we will explore Grand Pound, a village with Roman roots. Then we'll follow the trail of Cuthbert Main, one of the first Jesuit priests to be hanged under Elizabeth I. To finish up, we walk through the fabulous Trewithin estate. Grand Pound is a village between Truro and Snorstall. So for our walk today, we parked here. This is the car park in Grand Pound. It's near the school. We paid one pound to park the car, which is brilliant, and you get your ticket from the village store. And the money you've saved on your parking can buy you some strawberries. Uh, we haven't even started our walk yet. No. <laughs> There's a few left. They're very nice, very nice indeed. Let's not do our walk today, let's just sit oh, here and eat strawberries. Yeah, why not? They're lovely. Welcome to Grand Pound. Dating back to Roman times, this village has had a prosperous history. It was granted a charter in 1332 which exempted it from paying taxes and tolls on the repair and building of bridges. But more importantly it was granted the right to hold 52 markets a year. Grand Pound also had a tannery, a mill and six pubs at one time. At the end of our walk we will take a wander around the village. I can tell you one interesting fact about Grand Pound. Go on then. So we used to have six pubs. Yes. So you've got the one now, the dolphin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All those thirsty workers. I know. It's an unusual name for a pub, isn't it? The dolphin, because like we're in land. Yeah. Yeah. We're in search of a golden hiding place. Now, what could that be, Andrew? I like a game of hide and seek. <laughs> Is it in Grand Pan, this golden hiding place? It's not. No. No, so there's a clue. We're heading towards Creed at the moment. Perhaps it's there. Might be. <laughs> Let's go and find out. Today it's a homemade walk. We've made this one up ourselves. And it will include, you can include a little explore of Grand Pound Village itself, either at the beginning or end of this walk. And we'll put details of all the instructions, a written instruction sheet and an instruction video onto Patreon if you wanted to do it yourself. Tantalise our viewers now, Sarah. Okay. So you said at the start of the video about hiding. Yes. Hiding here in Cornwall. So I've got a clue for you. That's the Bible Christian Chapel from 1881. Yes, we have. We crossed a little, what would have been a marker post where they would have had a big stone a Celtic cross. cross. Yeah. Celtic cross. We're going to Creed Church. So we've got some religious items here. So is our hiding anything to do with religion? I've sussed it already. What? It's a dolphin hiding in a church. No. Ah. The ironic thing is, I think I've put in the instructions as a delicate, peaceful church. <laughs> it is most days. <laughs> What have you spotted? Well, we were in Trewithin yesterday and I think you're going to put some clips in of the visit to the garden. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure that George Horace Johnson was one of the owners of Trewithin. He was, I agree. And yeah. he's the guy in 1910 that started renovating the garden, Little isn't he? Garden, yeah. swallow's nests inside this porch. I don't know why I'm speaking so quietly with all this racket going on really, but I don't want to disturb them any further. So let's quietly go in. So 
also inside Creed Church, an interesting thing about Creed Church, it hasn't always looked like this. In 1903, it was near derelict, and there was a huge restoration project to get it back to looking like it is today. Here on the notice board is part of the journey of that story. One of the things I noticed is how few pews there are. There's chairs instead of pews. So I wonder if they were a victim of all the rain falling on them whilst the roof was in poor condition. That one actually looks quite new. I wonder where these go. I wonder. Oh, so many questions. Have you noticed in the corner as well? Looks like the old horse-drawn funeral cart. Goodness me, I don't think I've ever seen one of those. One of the ladies we got chatting to in the village at Grandpan told us that they'd put the flowers in here for the Queen's Jubilee, her 70 years on the throne, celebrated last weekend. And they're still just about hanging on. What's caught your eye? Above a door here. We've seen this in a number of the Cornish churches, but it's a letter of thanks. Well, say a letter, you're not going to be able to post that, but... <laughs> It's from Charles I, and it's to do with the, uh, well, it's thanking the people of Cornwall for their support in the Civil War. Indeed. And it's dated September 1643. Subsequently, he went on to lose the crown, didn't he, after that date? Well, he but, lost um, a bit more than that, didn't he? Well, yeah, he lost his head, didn't he? So is that another clue? Could be. It's not mm. about losing your head and a royal message. Yes, we'll, we'll take that one. So we've got something about religion. Something about losing your head and something about a royal message. Are you no getting it yet? Nothing about dolphins. No, nothing about dolphins. Right. <laughs> so this is interesting, Sarah. It okay. tells us on here that one of the previous vicars here, yeah. the Reverend William Gregor, he was also a keen chemist, and he actually found titanium. Oh, where? where? Uh, in Menachem. And basically, he treated the material with hydrochloric acid and dissolved out iron oxide. The white residue was discovered in sulfuric acid and then treated with soda, but after calcination, obtained white powder, titanium dioxide. Oh my goodness, this is all very technical to me. So, basically, he is known as the founder of titanium. It's used in the manufacture of aeroplanes, like in the jet turbines. Oh, wow. And things like that. It's also found in tanks. <laughs> other metals and whatever. So he's, he's invented this thing. And so then, he's then got to wait like 140 years for them to invent the plane. <laughs> yeah. Find some use I, for I'm it. I'm pretty sure the first planes that went up didn't have any titanium in it. No, probably not. No. <laughs> so we were going to hang around a little bit and see if one of the swallows flew back into their nest, but I can now hear the strimming guys are right outside the door. So the chances of that. <laughs> Very low. Remote. <laughs> so we're just going to carry on with our walk down to Golden. <gasps> Did I give it away? You might have done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Just make out the church tower. Yeah, I'm going to zoom in. Just to the left of that tree in the foreground, you can just make out the four pinnacles on the Tower Creed Church, where we've just been. And we're just now in this vast expanse of Cornish countryside, and it's so peaceful. The woods are golden woods, and we're heading to a place called Golden. Golden Mill Cottage. How pretty. Andrew, look yes. at this. It's not a public house, but it's a pub. So this pub is used in shooting season, isn't it? It is, Yeah. just for the shooting part. It's called the Vicar and the Spaniel. <laughs> well, we've got the Spaniel. <laughs> Does that make you the Vicar? <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Where are we, Andrew? We're in a little place, a little hamlet called Golden. Golden, and it is such a brilliant place to hide, which means it's a golden hiding place. Ah, I see what you did there. <laughs> Who so was our, hiding them? Our clues were religion and royalty and um, hiding. So it comes back to one of our Cornish saints, St Cuthbert Main. In 1577, he was caught here in this manor house behind us at Golden. It's a lovely house behind you, Sarah. It is. And part of it, if you look further up behind the trees, it is Elizabethan or Tudor. We can make out the mullioned windows. We've got a bit more detail about Cuthbert's story in the King's England book. And it says that this manor still has in its walls some of the structures of the days when Cuthbert Main was found hidden here. He was a priest who suffered death at Launceston, one of the first martyrs of Elizabethan prosecution, which followed Mary Tudor's reign of terror. For harbouring a priest here, Francis Trudgeon and his wife were taken to London and imprisoned in Fleet, where 11 of their 18 children were born. Wow, really? Yes. In prison? Not much to do in prison then. No, clearly not. Yes, yeah, so this is where Cuthbert Main was found by the then Sheriff of Cornwall, who was Richard Grenville. He came with several men and a hundred armed militia, if you like. And they kind of had a tip off that he might be here. They came on a bit of a ruse. And he was found here. And he was charged with practicing Catholic religion, giving mass, that sort of thing. He'd had a background where he'd been brought up in the normal Church of England at that time and he'd gone to Europe to convert to Catholicism and came back as a Jesuit priest to help the Catholics that were remaining in this country under Elizabeth I to worship in their way. But that was against the law, so hence he was, he was actually captured, taken to Launceston, tried and convicted and hung for his deeds. Oh gosh, it's awful, isn't it? Mm. So the chap who was harbouring him here, he said he was called Tr Trudgeon? Yeah, so that's a, it's an old Cornish name. Here in the book it's actually spelt as T-R-E-G-I-A-N. And we did a little bit of research and the modern equivalent of Trigayan is Trudgeon. So we reckon that that's probably how it was pronounced. So he didn't... Um he didn't uh, get hung then? No, but he would have been accepting the like Catholic mass at that time, which was against the law. Elizabeth I is head of the state and head of the church. She just wanted you to do the, be seen to do the right thing. She actually famously said that she didn't want to make windows into men's souls and actually force them to worship in a particular way. She just wanted people to toe the line. Unfortunately for this family, they were seen to be doing otherwise, so the law came down on them. It's just across the road from the present day Golden Manor House is this beautiful building here. It's been used as a barn now, but you can see from the traces around the windows and the doors and the way it's buttressed and substantial stonework here. It's a much older property. On the Ordnance Survey it's shown as a chapel. And we've done a bit of research. This property was uh, originally part of the Wolfden family who owned the, the land here. And they left this property to move to the new manor house, which is the one that Cuthbert Main was found in. They left this property in 1537. So this is really old. So golden didn't turn out to be a golden hiding place for poor old Cuthbert, did it? No, he, he tried. I yeah. mean, <laughs> as, as far as I understand it, he was kind of hiding in plain sight because yes. uh, the Trudgeon family, um, they had him as like a, almost like a servant, isn't he? a member of staff and, yes. and what have you. So yeah, not, not the greatest hiding place after all. But still very rich in history. Yeah, and it's a, it's a golden place to come and visit. <laughs> yeah. We've had a golden time, haven't we? We certainly have. <laughs> Did you get our clues, by the way? Well, our clues were... Yeah. Religion. Religion, yeah. A royal message. Yeah. Beheading. Yeah. And what else? Well, hiding, I think. Hiding. A golden hiding place, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. No dolphins. No, no dolphins no. involved. <laughs>
Are you um you taking photos to put on to like Instagram and Facebook? Yeah. Oh, okay. Are your um are your photos coming out nice and crisp? I don't know yet. Okay. Well, well, just for the purposes of this, can you say yes? Yes. Good. That's okay. And um, would you say that the house is wonderful? <laughs> and we've been to Golden. Yeah. Oh, I know where you're going. <laughs> where am I going, sir? Golden Wonder. Yeah. Golden <laughs> Wonder. Yes. <laughs> Do you think they've got an orchard here in their gardens? Uh, probably. Because if they did, they might have some golden, <laughs> golden delicious. delicious. <laughs> Andrew, you're just churning out all the golden oldies. <laughs> I am. You're quite right. Sarah? Yeah? Do you think we should change our dog for a golden retriever? Oh. I know one you can't get into this What's sequence. That? The golden hind. Yeah. It's a boat and we're inland. That's not going to work, is it? Challenge. <laughs> you could film my backside and it would be a garden ah, behind. No, I don't need to do that. Okay. Andrew? Yeah. Cows over there? Oh yeah, they are. Yeah. Great big horns? They have got big horns, yeah. Goldie horn? Gold, goldie horn. <laughs> No? Yes? Yes, yes really, yeah. all right. <laughs> anyway, I actually think, <laughs> and I hope you agree, that True Within Gardens is actually a little golden treasure. It is, it is. We had a lovely time there yesterday, yes, anyway. Yes, yeah. And Cafe's brilliant. It's got quite an extensive menu. It's, um, they cook it all themselves, so they know exactly what they're going, putting into it all. And I felt very comfortable with Celiac going in there. She gave me every confidence. And today I've had no ill effects, so. Yeah, perfect. That's a tick in the box, then, isn't it? Yeah, huge tick in the box for me. Wonderful there, isn't it? Predominantly a spring garden. They're full of um, rhododendrons and uh, camellias and yes. magnolias. Got quite a collection there, haven't they? But there is a few later plants. They've got lots of hydrangeas coming on as well, and it's a maze of paths. And we just had fun. Hello. It was beautifully Didn't done. We? Yeah, it was a good day out. So uh, you're going to put that together and put that as a separate video probably on Sunday. I think yeah. I'll have a look at the footage, come to a decision, but probably. Brilliant. Andrew, yeah. I expect you to do your best marching. Why? This is meant to be a Roman road. Is it? Yes. Oh, so the okay. Romans were in Grand Pound, yeah. and somewhere in Grand Pound they built a Grand Pont. Oh, a bridge? A big bridge, and Grand Pont kind of got changed over the years to Grand Pound. Ah. So best marching, best okay. foot forward. Come on, dog. Sarah, I am an educated man, and I know that Grand Pont is French, and yeah. I'm pretty sure that Romans are Italians. Yeah. Unless I was really not paying attention when I was at school. Well, maybe French is derived from Latin. Yeah. And that Mediterranean right, is well, the link. Okay. Just a maybe, I don't know. <laughs> when I say an educated man, I mean one, one CSE and one GCE. Right. Yeah. What does that make? Uh, nearly an O level. <laughs> Don't be fooled. He has got degree level qualifications. He's not as stupid as he makes out. <laughs> <laughs> like buses, aren't they? Yeah. I don't know, I wait all day for one to come along and get two at the same time. I'm ready. <laughs>
we just had a little refreshment back at the car. We're leaving the car park to do a quick explore of some interesting things in Grand Pound. Grand Pound is a really old market town. It was granted a charter in 1332 which exempted it from paying taxes and tolls on the repair and building of bridges. But more importantly it was granted the right to hold 52 markets a year. There was once six pubs in Grand Pound and we were kind of looking at the buildings earlier on trying to suss out maybe which ones used to be a pub. I think there's some clues on the building across the road. So if you look up there there's an old sign hanging bracket and above the windows are lights so maybe that was an old pub. This house has a plaque on it to John Hamden who was a member of parliament in 1621. Well, he was on the, the actual parliamentarian side during the Civil War and he refused to pay some of the taxes the King tried to impose. The Dolphin Inn is the final pub in the village and I do love the sculpture. of all of the local stories brought together by the WI. Good old WI. Yes, yeah, so they know everything, don't they? And it says here that the seven-sided market cross still remains in Grand Pound outside the market hall, but I don't understand the significance of it being seven-sided. Unless it's just a way of identifying it. Hey! Another tractor! presented to Grand Pound by the Reverend and Mrs Vivian of Creed Rectory in 1894. It's actually quite a landmark because it sticks out in the road and you've got to go around it as you go up the hill. I certainly remember seeing it from childhood as I've wandered off to St Austell, maybe sat in the back of the car as my mum and dad drove me. Nice to know more about it now. Tells us that the Church of St Nunn was built in 1370, close to the Market Hall, which is directly behind us. And the church is directly behind yeah. you. <laughs> As a chapel of ease for the convenience of worshippers, it was rebuilt in 1869 into the delightful church it is today. But this book goes on to tell us that a small dark chamber behind the Market Hall was the jail. Perhaps it was used quite often as later in its history Grand Pound became a notorious rotten borough with much buying and selling of votes. It was once described as one mass of notorious corruption. Ooh, naughty Grand Pound. I like notorious corruption. <laughs> Here's the little guild hall, and it is tiny, but perfectly formed. So is this the chamber they speak of at the back? Gosh, it is right next to the church. You can hardly squeeze in there. So if this is the chamber, this would be where the jail was. Oh, <laughs> I've got my back to the church. I can't go any further back. Apparently there's a toilet there. Oh, jail. oh really? Yeah, I was reading online. So, oh. yeah, apparently at the back of the hall. Little building, must be this. Yes. And now it's a toilet. <laughs> We're just wandering down here so that we can take a left down an unmade track. The cottages are meant to be really pretty and of course you're away from the traffic aren't you so it's a nicer way to get back down to the bottom of the street. The village possessed a mill mentioned in the Doomsday Book located at the end of what is still called Mill Lane. In 1501 there were spinning mills, in 1653 fulling mills and later in 1801 these became woollen manufacturers. From 1816 the industry changed to glove manufacturing. Oh, exquisite. Oh, I don't 
don't know if it's the evening sun, but they smell divine. Fantastic walk today from Grand Pound to Creed and found a golden hiding place. We did. We tried to tell you the story of Cuthbert Maine. Poor old Cuthbert. Yeah, he had a bit of a tragic end, really, he didn't did. he? But our walk didn't have a tragic end. We went up to Tree Withen Gardens. Beautiful. So all of the details for today's walk will be on Patreon and YouTube membership. There'll be a written instruction sheet and also a video instruction. So if you're interested, pop over to either one of the two of those. The details are in the description. But for now, a golden hidden gem in Cornwall. Till next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.